Good afternoon and welcome along to the Excelsior Stadium with more Scottish Women's Premier League football in Glasgow City are up against Rangers. These sides only met each other on the last game before the split but they're back at the Excelsior. We'll have post-match thoughts from Paul Elliott after our highlights coverage of this one. Looking at the starting team as well for Scott Booth. He's not faced Rangers before despite the club's only meeting at the end of June. He's picked a side that will be looking for goals. Abby Grant with the top goal scorer honours for the club with 14 in all competitions. Claire Shine will be looking to add to her tally as well. And then you've got a Sullivan, Montgomery, Joe Love can score a stunner in there now and again. And also Erin Cuthbert who will try and score against her own club. And there's plenty of reinforcements on the bench including Sarah Cleland to the relatively new signing. And Susan Fairley is back in the squad along with Julie Footing, they may well feature later on. For Kevin Murphy's Rangers, injuries and players leaving has really forced his hand with a lot of young players getting probably earlier than expected debuts in the first team. Katie Turner joined from Hibs at the start of the season. She will be lively with Lisa Swanson and Claire Gemmel will marshal things in the middle of the park. But there is uh, no real depth on the bench and Rangers have not won a league game since the 14th of June against Forfa. Now here's Cuthbert, turns and faces the other direction and motors on. Neil trying to get there to cover. Still going Cuthbert. Montgomery's in the mix. Oh, Montgomery might profit. Not quite. First real chance goes to City inside three minutes. O'Sullivan. It's Montgomery. Here's Grant in space and goalkeeper fumbles it, shines there to clean up. Back to Montgomery and it's away. Claire Johnson, the keeper will be mighty relieved about that. Love over the top and Leon Ross on the overlap. Montgomery trying to get up there, came off the head of Sloy. Doherty might get a second chance at this. Grant back to Doherty, in towards Shine. Grant and doesn't quite connect, straight into the path of Johnson and goal. Oh, it comes off Turner. Ball through from Swanson for Katie Turner. She's not got any support and couldn't really do much else, but it's well wide. Love to Leon Ross, lovely turn in towards Cuthbert and it's blocked in there. Shine trying to get it back, was there a trip? Referee not interested. Rangers try and get it away with Turner on the chase. Turner gets away from McMurtry and support coming up from Swanson. It's in towards Swanson. And that would have been some finish and some way to turn the game on its head from one end to the other. Rangers are trying to get away and that's fell in the path of Shine. Keeper stops and it's a scramble in there. And Rangers almost threw it away. The hard work in the first 26 minutes. The 27 minutes in this first half. The Unlos is delivered again. We'll come back for a second goal. What came all the way across there? Shine! And she profits with a Neil Coon and Clear. And the resistance is broken. Clear Shine with her seventh league goal of the season just before the half hour mark and City have broken the deadlock it's 1-0 and it was really Rangers doing from the bit of play before and Bershine nearly scored conceded the corner and you wonder how that will change things up all the way to McCulloch and Turner trying to get up here Alexander's going to have to come out and clear and does a bit shaking again from City defensively Now, Gemmel. 
Ball over the top. Looking for Sloy. Sloy's through here. Oh, and Sinclair was making a run. Maybe he should have played it across. It's fail for Jetsley for Sullivan. On to Shine. And the keeper spins around a little bit, but holds on to it. Does clear Johnson and that would mean a sucker punch second before the break. No Grant. Comes through Joe Love. Shooting position! Oh, beauty! She's been in the fringe of the box looking to find the space out the whole of the first half. And a Joe Love stunner for her fourth league goal of the season. Eighth in total now. And it's just a little bit more comfortable for City as the half-time whistle beckons. 2-0. It's a short one, Fairley. Oh, she's missed it. But Kenny Montgomery doesn't. Rangers caught out of the ears there again. And Montgomery, the SWPL player of the season last year, has slotted into the City of Maxwell this season and scores her fourth league goal, a fifth in total, and City in cruise control in the 52nd minute. Love to Ross. Dean Ross goes for a spectacular. Now they're all at now trying to beat Love's effort. Not great from the keeper and ball over the top for Fairley. And she's back. But she's injured herself with the goal. And she just came back from a spell away. And concerned straight away from the short-lived delight. And 13 minutes into this second half, Susan Fairley scores her 10th goal of the season. All of them have came in the league, but it comes with pain. And Fairley taking a two or three minutes, but she is back on her feet, which is good to see. Montgomery up long for Grant. Over the top of Foley, in play. Still going Grant, sets up fleeting, still going! And she's on the boards. For City, she's struggled all year with niggling injuries and finally found her feet back on the pitch. And the 34 year old joined in March, finally gets a goal on the board and it's high fives for City Sullivan shot to Ross fizzes in there and Rafferty with a strike she thinks it got a deflection if he doesn't agree goal kick finds a Sullivan and Scarfed a bit there by Watson. Fleeting's through. And she rolls it in. What to say about buses? There's a second in one afternoon in terms of goals. She's well and truly off the mark now. And City. 6 0 in front. And there is still the Rangers fighting them late. 20 minutes to go. forward to Fairley went for the near post and Johnson just had to tip it around fizzing towards Montgomery Doherty or Sullivan Sullivan marching on it's ricocheting about Doherty in there fleeting to still Doherty uh, the brief going on, Chelsea Watson in there, and Leah Hughes is injured. 
slowly trying to find a teammate and instead comes back and Sullivan. Grant motoring on. Is there a challenge there? Is it inside or out? Well, it's been given and... Foley was the one in there with the challenge and... It's going to be a chance for a seventh from the spot. Leon Ross has scored six in the league. Make that seven now. And ten in total. As it's seven for the afternoon and 97 for the season so far in all competitions. It's been very one-sided, especially the second half and the penalties in from Ross. Grant fleeting, continuing on the move and trying to get round. Fairley's there and smashed off the crossbar by Grant. It's waiting for the net to ripple. Grant not on the score sheet yet today. So he's top goal scorer for the season. But it's over. And City have run right against the young and inexperienced Rangers side. And the free fall continues for Rangers. No win since the 14th of June in the league. And it was 1-0 through clear shine the 20th minute. A corner result from a little bit of an error in the range of defence. And 1-0, Rangers had one or two chances in the break. They may well felt a little bit lucky to be behind, but then Joe Love scored a stunner in stoppage time in the first half to make things 2-0, and that seemed to deflate the visitors. Goals in the second half from Montgomery. Fairley, who looked like she may have been injured after the goal, got up and carried on, so she's OK after just coming back. Julie Fleeting, the veteran, scored two goals to get her City career underway and a Leanne Ross penalty made it 7-0 in the final six or seven minutes. Job done for City, along with Hemis beating Spartans thanks to Lizzie Arnott's hat-trick. The title race continues. Full-time score at the Excelsior Stadium. Glasgow City 7, Rangers 0. So, seven goals for City. Uh, Scott Booth has given us his reaction that's on the YouTube page in full. You can see that. We're going to Paul Elliott, journalist's viewpoint of this one. You've just spoken to Scott. Um, you were sitting up alongside me in the, the commentary as well. What did you make of the seven-goal victory? It was very comprehensive from uh, Glasgow City. Uh, first half, I thought actually Rangers made a good game of it. They were pretty well organised at the back. Uh, City took a wee bit of time to try and break them down, but I thought the goal just before half time was a killer for them. Uh, brilliant goal was as well. Uh, and then in the second half, Glasgow City just complete dominance and really good tempo about their play today. Uh, good one, two touch passing and, and you know using the flanks really well as well. So uh, and it's good to see a few players coming in who've been out, out of the team for a while and, and making a good impact. So I think all in all, I think everybody at Glasgow City will be very pleased with uh, today's. A uh, big victory. Mm. I will touch on one of those, or a couple of those players in just a minute. But uh, as you touched on, it was one nil. It was a bit lucky the goal. Rangers had a couple of chances on the break, um, but you kind of felt when Joel have pinged that one in. Um, there was one or two thinking there was a deflection, but not too sure about that. But it was a lovely finish anyway, and it kind of killed the game at half time. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in the screamer camp, and <laughs> unless I see a, a deflection in the footage afterwards, now it's, it looked like an absolute screamer to me, and. Uh, well, there's nothing you can do about that. Goalkeeper was rooted to the spot. But yeah, I think that totally did change the game for me. And Rangers, um, I'm not saying they looked deflated in the second half, but it was a mountain for them to come, come back into it, especially with, with City, um, you know, getting a second goal, controlling the game, some good passing. Uh, and, you know, it was always going to be a hard, hard game for them. And City took well advantage of it in the second half. Dominance. Well, Susan Fairley back and scoring. Uh, thankfully, she got back on her feet as well after uh, being down for a couple of minutes. Also, Julie Fleeton had their niggling injuries. We've watched her once or twice now and looks like getting back to her best, certainly looking pretty sharp. And I think I mentioned in commentary about buses and uh, she got one and then she got another goal. Yeah, I know. Uh, she could have got the hat-trick as well. She was allowed to take the penalty, but uh, she was good. She was really, really good, actually. Um, and you can see she's kind of getting back to the, the standard that we, we, we all know that she's at and uh, real good striker goals. So, uh, the second one in, in particular I thought was a, a lovely wee finish uh, and always just looked like scoring and our general play is always really, really good, links up really, really well, good vision, good passer 
uh, and uh, good movement as well. So it's really good for City to have somebody like that coming back in, you know, getting back to full fitness and scoring some goals. Susan Fairley, good to see her again as well and did really, really well. Always buzzing around the park, causing problems and uh, yeah, took a good, a good goal for her as well. Yeah. Quick word on Rangers. Um, they've got a lot of young players that are really good players. We've, we've seen a few of them before. But probably, you know, the thrust into the first team experience, the players leaving and like injuries have been part of their season as well. And they've not won in the league since the middle of June now. And it's a bit of a shame to see a team like Rangers not really anywhere near the top two. Yeah, um, we've been used to seeing them there for a, a few seasons now. Um, maybe it's some sort of period of transition for them because they do have some good young players. Uh, but they are young and you can see sometimes that they're young. Um, you know, lots of good potential in there, but it's it's going to be a nurturing process for them to try and climb up the table and you know make make some impact going forward. Um, it's a heavy defeat for them today, but I'm sure they'll bounce back from it and um, and grow these young players that they've got. And the more game game time they get, you have to think that the the better they will be as they go forward. But it's going to take them time, I think. Final word on the title race. Uh, Hibs have won today by three goals nil away at Spartans. Lizzie Arnott scoring a hat trick there. Um, Glad City, I think, are now at 97 goals for the season. So the goal difference is completely irrelevant here. It's going to be the showdown we expect and hope in October. Um, City are away to East Kilbride to take on Celtic, and that won't be an easy game up there. No, it won't. Um, but I think they'll go in with their heads high. They've, they've done really, really well today. Uh, really good performance all round, lots of goals. Uh, and obviously everybody's starting to buzz a wee bit now about the Champions League and drawing Chelsea. It's a, you know, there's a lot of exposure for the club. People playing for places, they all want to play in that game. Uh, and I think uh, City will go into the game against Celtic with uh, their heads high and um, and, and they'll, they'll play a good game. They'll, they'll play some good football and they'll all want to show just how good they are. And uh, it's going to be tough for Celtic, I would say that. OK, we'll see what happens. Thanks very much, Paul. We've still got plenty of build-up with the Chelsea game to come in October in the Champions League. But as I say, City next, they're up to Cape Park to take on Celtic. We'll be back next time with more highlights, but City winning by seven goals to nil today.